Hey, I'm Andrew. And I'm Andrew. And he's back from the awesome universe again. Yeah, drug me off the beach for this one. <laughs> We're back to Extraordinary Times, last one for this week. All right, so we're just going to go through this uh, probably a little bit faster than you're used to because, really, the only awesome, really, really awesome thing we have is the first story today, and that is um, astronomers have found a planet that could possibly hold life. Now, we, we've talked about some of this kind of stuff before. Check out in previous episodes where they think they may have found something here. They, they might be over here. Well, this one is in what's called the Goldilocks zone. It is just close enough to the sun to get the warmth from it, but not too close. It's going to boil away any water. It's a rocky planet, and it probably has water. Aliens are close. Uh, the planet's name is actually similar to other ones. It's in the Gleazy system, I believe, or at least in the Gleazy system of stars. It is Gleazy 667C lowercase c. I don't know you just say that C again? I, whatever. Either way, 22 light years away from here, which is relatively close and could hold life. Fun. So we found your planet? or Anyway. Oh, wait, you're from a different universe, not another planet. Right. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> I kill you now. <laughs> Speaking of things that are dead. Oh. No, <laughs> that was horrible. Um, <laughs> apparently, an article got out, a new biography uh, that uh, is featured down in the links down below. Check it out. Um, contains a lot of interesting new facts about Steve Jobs. And apparently, one of his ambitions is to, was to make a... Willy Wonka style tour of the Apple factory. Golden ticket and all. Yeah. Put put a scary tunnel in there. <laughs> what fun. <laughs> I don't know whether to just laugh or cry. Evidently he wanted to wear the, the purple suit and everything. You know, top hat and, and walk up and greet the lucky winner. Feature little green men and laser beams and you have a all out sci-fi horror film here we go here we go I'll hire Johnny Depp <laughs> <laughs> there we go alright so we've talked about a, a few awesome elderly people recently and I just want to cover this one to, to, to cap it off for the week if you will um, <laughs> no intended pun there uh, so this 83-year-old woman from Plantation, I believe, Florida? Florida, California. Yeah, Florida. Um, Zeta Staples was out walking her dog with her walker. She just had back, back surgery, so really slow walking. Um, and a guy comes up and uh, tears her, her necklace off her, her neck and uh, grabs a couple other things and runs. Well, she knows him run down a, an alley she knows is a, a dead end. So she, uh, you know walks over there and as he's coming back the other direction she starts hitting him with a walker <laughs> now he still knocked her down and, and, and drove away but this did all give uh, spectators enough time to realize which car was his and write down his license plate and he was uh, captured a little bit later so uh, yeah bad idea to mess with the old people even if they have a walker <laughs> Right. And other news about people who weren't thinking clearly. Need more brain cells. Clearly. <laughs> apparently, apparently this person was not informed that a chocolate sandwich spread is not healthy. <laughs> uh, a woman filed a civil lawsuit against the company that produces Nutella because 
she thought it was healthy. What and are it's you? Not. Well, what, what? What is wrong with you? Are you, are you new? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just get to this planet? <laughs> oh come on! I just got here. I'm not even that bad. <laughs> Maybe but, she's from Gleezy Six Six Whatever Whatever. C is lowercase. Anyway. It might be short, but they're not that bad. Uh, did it say anything? <laughs> I don't remember any of that. <laughs> Flashy thing. Anyway, so yeah, she actually won a three and a half million lawsuit. Turns out, uh, if you bought Nutella anytime within the last four years and thought it was healthy for you, you could get in on this. Um, and so the sheer number of people that are, uh, have bought Nutella, you're probably going to end up with like four bucks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I did, but I lost the receipts. I don't know if I qualify. Uh, I wonder if there's still time. Anyway. <laughs> really? Okay, so going over into political news a bit, uh, do a little bit more later as well. Um, the House of Representatives has passed a bill, a uh, cybersecurity uh, cyber bill. Now, don't freak out. Um, you know, there was that whole thing about SOPA and PIPA earlier. Uh, you know, it was really terribly written. This new one, CISPA, uh, the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, uh, is a lot better. And for one thing, it covers more restrictions on what the government can do with information it gets from uh, companies that give it uh, private information and uh, helps protect pe uh, people's privacy a lot better in a lot clearer language than either of those two uh, earlier um, potential laws. Unfortunately, Obama is still uh, saying that he's going to veto this simply because it is something uh, cybernetic security. So I guess we'll just have to see what happens. I really need to look into the law more myself, see if there are any, are any potential really bad loopholes, but uh, from what I've seen so far, it looks pretty good. So anyway, on to the next. All right. A lot better news. Uh, the uh, for those of you who are in, really into art, uh, you may know the name Edvard Munch or Munch, Munch I think Munch Edvard Munch something like that. I don't know. It's in a language I He's don't like really Polish. Speak. Uh, it would be Munch then. Yeah. 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 Munch. Munch. And uh, uh, if you're Polish and watching this, please correct our language. Anyway, <laughs> comments. We love them. Uh, they love them. Uh. All right. So, yeah, his uh, artwork. Uh, this one is entitled "The Scream." Uh, there's four original ones. Uh, and it's a painting of a person. We don't know male or female screaming. But what's interesting about it is it's an impressionist painting uh, that is heavily influenced by uh, Japanese artwork. And a uh, number of, uh, it's predicted to get more than 80 million at uh, auction at a Sotheby's at so Yeah, Sotheby's auction. I, so. It's in England. Either way, yeah, it's up for auction. Number of people looking at it across the world. Um, personally, I'm kind of rooting for some of the museums over in his homeland, which have the other three. Uh, this is the, the only one that, that hasn't um, found a home or museum over there. But people uh, from all across the world, from like Hong Kong to the Middle East to, you know, private collectors here in the U.S. are looking at it. So I don't have $8 billion lying around to you. Darn. Anyway. I wish. All right. Back to the political. This is something I just wanted to cover really quick because... Political line really irks me, um, especially when you, you, you take credit for something that really was not yours. A memo from the CIA has come out recently um, about, you now we're detailing what happened in the Situation Room as Osama was looking at the uh, um, strike force going in, uh, or sorry, Obama was looking at the strike force going in to get Osama. I always get those two mixed up. I feel terrible. Not really. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, it turns out uh, his whole boasting of, yes, he was there for every single point of the way, and he was discussing every single point of the way, and he said was the one that said, go in and, and kill him, 
Well, it turns out more he was just kind of sitting back in the corner, and the only thing he ever really said was, get him. And uh, rather vague when you're talking in military terms. Turns out Admiral McRaven was the one that was really in uh, control of everything. And if you look at some of the things that Obama said while in that room, as reported by the CIA, uh, really McRaven was going to be his fall guy if something went wrong. So, yeah. And then later on, another article I may link you to, uh, <laughs> Obama's trying to say, you know, Romney would have made the same decision you I, I did. I'm like, okay, one, what decision did you make besides, you know, saying get him? And two, you're always saying, you know, the Republicans are the ones that are always too warlike, and now you're saying one wouldn't be warlike. Anyway, sorry, just like to uncover hypocrisy myself. And on to last story of the day. Uh, so, uh, something with a much higher IQ than the individuals we've been discussing, uh, relatives of the jellyfish. Uh, these, uh, Salpa, or Salp, 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 S-A-L-P, I think that's how you say it, Salp, 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 correct us if we're wrong, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying Salp, or Salpa, whichever one sounds good at the time. Enjoy. Okay. Um, either way, these organisms, jellyfish-like organisms, uh, clog the intake valve for a nuclear power plant. Uh, in California. For, in, Calif in California, in the United States, on the shore of California, a little bit north of Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the reason there's an intake valve in the ocean for a nuclear power plant is to cool down the nuclear cores that they use to heat water and, spit and turbines to produce energy. Uh, without that water, your cores become exploded. You go critical. Uh, it's not like a nuclear bomb, but there's still fallout radiation, like the stuff we saw in Japan. Uh, yeah, think, I was going to say, think Fukushima. Yeah, Fukushima. Uh, th those events. It's that sort of thing. Still very bad for the environment. Still something to definitely look out for and keep an eye on. Um, Fortunately, they, they did catch it. Yeah, it was caught in time. Uh, the standard procedure is to just wait and for these little fellas to float out with the tide. Big. <laughs> yeah, they're just little, little bitty guys. And uh, they'll float on out with the tide like jellyfish do. And then you can start back up, you know, which apparently happens to some degree every so often anyway. So it's this not is out just, of the ordinary. It's just a larger than average club. So disaster averted. Uh, thanks again for watching Extraordinary Times uh, this whole week. Sorry once again for Jeremy not being here, but, you know, Vegas calls, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks again to all the people that have uh, contributed to this. Uh, all uh, contributors will be down in the... Uh, links below. Um, I'm Andrew. And I'm Andrew. And uh, be aware.